right, good morning, everybody. Or good evening, if you're watching this in the evening. Whatever, good day to all of you. Uh, welcome back to another episode. Let me make, yep, make sure my camera was facing the right way. Another episode of my Appalachian Trail uh, through hike. And uh, it is April 10th, Monday morning, and it is the 12th day uh, of my hike. Uh, I've explained to you what happened with my back. And we've talked about that. I've explained about the unbelievable trail angels that have adopted me. And uh, I'm still at the residence, uh, hanging out. This morning I got up and uh, Mr. Jim and I went in and had biscuits and gravy at McDonald's. And I was moving pretty slow, but it, my back is feeling better. Um, now I went ahead and took some ibuprofen. And my, what I'm doing now is walking down the mountain, uh, down their driveway. And I'll hike back up and probably do that a couple of times and see how it goes with my back. And also, I'll try it with my pack on. And if that's all going well, my hope would be I can head out on the trail tomorrow. But uh, they're so gracious. They don't want me to go. They want me to stay as long as I, as I can. And, and uh, they're really enjoying taking care of me. And I'll be honest, I'm enjoying being taken care of. Uh, pretty nice, quite a radical change from being on the trail where you are 100% responsible for uh, for your own well-being. And and uh, here, like Miss Sharon won't hardly let me get anything for myself. She just takes great care of me. Uh, anyway, so I'm supposed to kick rocks off if I see any. And sure enough, there's a few rocks. Um, I'll tell you what, guys, this has been, uh, I'm, I'm making, you know, I'm not going to say I'm making light of this. Because it was kind of a big deal with my back. Um, but but uh, it's been such an amazing experience uh, to meet these folks, to meet the folks at church yesterday, uh, to have them praying for me now, and, I mean, wanting to support me. And, and it's just really been, uh, been, been a real blessing. It's such a bad circumstance turning into such a great blessing. But at the same time, it's really hard to not be on the trail. Like, all I think about, are those mountains back there behind me and where I would be if this back thing hadn't have happened. I hated to uh, lose Lipstick and Kelly. They were great friends. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever meet up again or not, but I'm sure I'll make lots of uh, more friends as we go. But one of the, the real um, key things, I think, to successfully completing the trail is absolutely making sure that you hike your own hike. And when you're with a bunch of people, you tend to do things that they want to do or they do things that you want to do, and somebody ends up paying the penalty for that. So it's probably the best that I generally stick to hiking my, by myself, and that's generally. Um, who knows what will happen, because I would sure welcome um, lots of company. That's part of the reason I'm here, and some of you know exactly what's going on with all that. But uh, anyway, so I just wanted to say it's been it's very difficult to be here and not be making progress. But uh, as I think I've said from the beginning, you have to take care of your body. And so that's what I'm doing. And part of this little trial run down the mountain is just to see how I'm doing, uh, take some bigger steps and see how my back does. Um, I can tell you right now, every time I take a little misstep, my back twinges some. So I, I hate to sit around and wait, but it'd be better to be waiting here in a nice comfy bed than out on the side of the trail somewhere. So that's what's going on. That's a little bit of what's going on in my mind. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. Boy, I want to be out there. I met another through hiker today in the, the grocery store, and um, she's making 20 miles a day. And, oh, boy, I just I long to be out there. Um, so, anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Um, let's see. Thoughts from the day. I had a few thoughts, and uh, I didn't think about it before I fired up the camera. So I'll come back after a little while. I might do some gear gear demonstrations too while I'm down. Uh, the weather is absolutely spectacular <laughs> right now. I mean, the, I've, the three days I've been down, Saturday, Sunday, and today, the weather has been, could it be designed any better? So I'll hike in the snow and sleet and take zero days when it's beautiful. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it for now. So let's talk about um, hiking. For a minute, what do you think? Is that a good, a good topic? Um, I think so. So guess what? Because um, you guys are watching and I'm the one talking, I get to pick the topic. And so right now, the topic is hiking. That's what we're going to talk about. So I'm on my second trip 
um, back up the mountain. I walked all the way down, um, turned around, hiked all the way back up to the very top, which is right above uh, where I'm staying, and uh, turned around, went back down, and now I'm going up. By the way, I don't know if you can see how steep this driveway is. Um, I don't know how to give you a reference. I don't know if that helps, but it's pretty steep. Uh, great training. Uh, great to see how uh, how my back does. So anyway, and it went went well. Uh, feels great actually to get out here and actually do something. So I'm excited about that. But anyway, I was talking with Bob Sir Pax a lot at Top of Georgia Hostel. Uh, as I said earlier, he's a triple crowner, which means he's hiked the Appalachian Trail all the way through, hiked the Pacific Crest Trail all the way through, and then the Continental Divide Trail, of course, all the way through. So they, if a person does that, they're called a triple crowner. Anyway, Bob's a triple crowner, plus he owns and operates one of the busiest hostels on the Appalachian Trail. So he has lots of experience, plus lots of experience seeing people come through that have different difficulties with their hike. So I asked him, uh, Sir Pax a lot, what is, uh, you know, the common denominator between people that succeed hiking the trail or people that fail? And first thing he did was yanked me up, took me in the bathroom, and look, had me look in the mirror. And he said, do you like that guy in the mirror? And praise the Lord, I was able to say, well, actually, yeah, I kind of do. I like that guy. And he said, well, good. Because if you're out here trying to prove something, like prove to your parents that you're worth loving, or prove to your boss that you're valuable, or your spouse, or prove that you can kick drugs or alcohol or smoking or whatever, you'll end up hiking so hard to prove to whoever that you are valuable that you'll end up hurting yourself. He said, if you wouldn't make your 10-year-old child hike, then you shouldn't hike. In other words, if you have a pain or a, a bad back or an ailment or whatever, if you wouldn't make a 10-year-old hike, then don't hike yourself. I'm clearing rocks off the driveway, and there was a big one. Um, anyway, but I mentioned this is like a killer driveway. <laughs> big hill, but anyway, so what good advice um, Bob gave. If you wouldn't make your 10-year-old children hike in the conditions, then you shouldn't hike. And so that gives me some, it's the only reason I'm still here, uh, taking it easy because of what Bob said because I would not have made one of my kids hike yesterday or today. Hopefully I would make them hike tomorrow because I'm hoping to hike tomorrow. Two trips down with no pack, um, probably get some water, whatever, take a little break, and then I'll grab my pack and I'm gonna do the same thing. Go up and down a time or two and see how it goes carrying my pack. And then I'll know if I should go tomorrow. Plus, have to wait and see how I feel when I first got to bed. But anyway, something to think about is that whole, you know, if you wouldn't make your little kid do it, then you shouldn't do it. So maybe that'll help you decide when to push forward in whatever your life goals are and when to wait and rest and recover. Sometimes we need a little kick in the pants to get going. And sometimes we need to use the brain that our good Lord gave us to make good decisions on when to wait. It's hard to wait. Very hard. I could go out there and push hard, probably collapse in five or ten miles, have to push the SOS button and get help. I don't want to do that. So this whole Appalachian Trail thing is a six-month deal. So you can't worry about two days here and, you know, a day there. You got to look at the end result. So there you go. Thoughts so far, life lessons learned from a beautiful home in the Georgia mountains. <laughs> All right, man. If you haven't, um, and this isn't the wrap up, but if you haven't like subscribed to my channel, please do so. That helps us track um, how many people we're reaching. And then also, if you like the videos, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't like them, hit the thumbs down button. If you don't like it, let me know what it is that you don't like. And if you do, 
let me know what it is that you do like. <laughs> That's encouraging. So anyway, thanks a bunch. Whew. Enjoying the beautiful day. It's good to be outside. All right, so what do you do when you get done with your uh, your test hike? Sorry, let me adjust the camera. You get done with your test hike, you make a sandwich with chips and pickle spears and uh, wild cherry Mio drink flavoring stuff. And you sit out on the deck over, looking over the mountain range. That's what you do when you're recovering from a little bit of a back spasm. Uh, and after your pre-hike, your test hike. And by the way, the two hikes, I went up and down the mountain twice. And it went real well. So probably after lunch, I'll grab my pack and do it again. And oh boy, maybe tomorrow I can get out there and start whacking those mountains. Blowing up blazes again. Turning pages and knocking off miles. Headed for Maine. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming along. So I did my uh, test hike with my pack after lunch. Went up and down the mountain like one and a half times. And uh, it went very well. So I have eaten my last supper here at my adopted home, I believe. Um, Lord willing, boy, I have... Uh, uh, had it just a time of my life. It's been absolutely amazing to be able to be here and to experience this. I mean, look at this view with the moon over the mountains. Um, kind of is like a you know a final um, goodbye. I'll be able to videotape some in the morning too. But anyway, um, yeah, the, the hikes went well. Back is feeling uh, pretty good. I uh, hope that I sleep well and that it doesn't have too big of a of an issue in the morning first thing. But the plan is to meet. Uh, Pastor Danny at Starbucks at 7.30. We'll grab a cup of coffee and maybe even a donut. Uh, and then he'll deliver me to Dix Creek Gap where I will begin or resume my march toward, first of all, North Carolina. It's nine miles away and it'd be great to get there tomorrow. So anyway, um, again, just been super blessed by uh, the, f the folks here and being able to stay with them and, and experience everything that is around Hiawassee. So, uh, again, I hope you all are having a great day, and thanks so much for coming along with me. I will talk to you in the morning.